All right, we're back and we've got a lot to unpack here today. We're going to talk about German expansion from 1938 to 1939 to the, to the lead up of the Second World War and the German invasion of Poland. Uh, we're going to go back to 1938 and, and, uh, and remember that um, Germany had long wanted this Anschluss, this political union with Austria. And, but, but since the, the assassination of Engelbert Dolfus back in 1934 and Italy kind of puffing up uh, to, to stop Germany from, uh, from completing that deal back in 1934, um, Austria has attempted to maintain its independence from Germany. In 1936, um, Austrian Chancellor Kurt von Schuschnigg that you see in, on top of me here, um, he is going to enter into what is known as the Austro-German Agreement uh, with, with Germany where Germany will reaffirm Austrian independence. Both of them agree to stay out of each other's internal affairs, um, but Austria would conduct its po foreign policy consistent and in consultation with, with being a German state. Also, Austrian Nazis, uh, at this point called uh, an opposition party, would be given a prominent role in the Austrian government while ceasing violence. Now, at this point, the Austrian political party was actually banned. Um, so they're, they're letting these people with, with this Nazi ideology enter into the Austrian government in hopes that it would keep Hitler in Germany back. But by 1938, there's continued political violence um, in, in Austria, um, supported by this, this Nazi right, leading Schuschnigg to request a meeting with Adolf Hitler. Uh, now, this meeting does not go well for Kurt von Schuschnigg. Um, after a verbal assault uh, by, by Hitler that lasted hours, Schuschnigg will ultimately agree to Hitler's demands, a release of Nazi agitators from Austrian prisons, an end to the ban in Austria on their, their Nazi party, appointment of additional Nazis into the Austrian government, uh, assimilation of the Austrian and German economies. This is really a, a capitulation. It, it is one step away from Austrian Anschluss. Uh, failure to meet these demands, according to Hitler, would result in a German invasion. Now, Schuschnigg is going to try to circumvent this by going to the people, and he calls for a plebiscite. Remember, a plebiscite is a vote of the people. What do you guys want on Austrian independence? And if he had that public support, that could give him justification to move away from these agreements with Hitler. Hitler will circumvent the vote, though, by mobilizing the German army, and he sees no opposition coming from Italy or Britain or France, even though he does have opposition coming from his military, who doesn't think he's ready for a move like this. Schuschnigg will resign, and Germany moves into Austria on the 12th of March, 1938. The Anschluss is completed. Following that, there will be a plebiscite in Austria, but now it's on whether you accept this, uh, this Anschluss with Germany, and 99% uh, vote in approval. Now, recognize, if you ever see a vote that is going that overwhelmingly towards, or towards one candidate, we're talking 99%, there might very well be, uh, be some uh, voter intimidation going on. Um, the Sudetenland crisis, let's move on. Uh, Hitler's attention, now that he has Austria, moves over to Czechoslovakia. Remember his goal to bring together all German people, creating this united, uh, greater Germany. Um, Czechoslovakia had population, had, had millions of Germans living in it. Um, According to Adolf Hitler, though, Czechoslovakia was a, a Slavic nation and, and what he considered untermensch uh, in his uh, racist worldview. Many Czechs had resisted Austrian rule uh, back during the Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, and Czechoslovakia was uh, geographically a problem for Germany. Uh, the, the western portion of Czechoslovakia wedged right into, uh, right into the eastern portion of Germany, um, and there are growing military and economic economic power. Um, they, they're a strong supporter of the League of Nations and an ally of France. Um, and then within Czechoslovakia, there is this region known as the Sudetenland, which is a mountainous resource-rich borderland uh, between Germany and Czechoslovakia. Three and a half million Sudeten Germans live in the region, and they're feeling that they're resented as a minority in this Czechoslovakian state. Uh, the Great Depression is going to exacerbate their, their grievances, um, and, and we're going to see, just as we saw in Austria, 
Czech uh, Nazis um, start to rise up and, and agitate for independence from Austria. This ultimately results in the summer of 1938 to the Czech government declaring martial law in these Sudetenland regions. To, to calm this down uh, and to, to avoid greater conflict in, in Europe, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, pictured above me all the way to the left here, uh, Neville Chamberlain will try to broker a deal with Adolf Hitler um, over the Sudetenland, but Hitler keeps upping the demands. In uh, Munich, Germany in September of 1938, uh, Hitler will agree to a, a wider meeting organized by Benito Mussolini to try to solve this Sudetenland crisis. Uh, but we all know exactly what Adolf Hitler is going to accept. Um, Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union are not invited to this conference. So Czechoslovakia can't be at the meeting that is ultimately deciding its fate. And the Soviet Union being left out is gonna cause some bitterness that we'll talk about later. Out of this meeting comes the Munich Pact, um, and this is going to allow for German occupation of the Sudetenland as early as October 1st, just a few days later. Um, and then an international commission will convene to determine the rest of the borders um, of, of Czechoslovakia, and plebiscites will be held in disputed territories. Poland and Hungary are going to gain some land from, uh, from Czechoslovakia. Czechs and Germans could have free movement. So if like you're a Czech living in the Sudetenland, you could move um, out of that region. If you're a German living in Czechoslovakia, you had free movement to move in to the Sudetenland region. And importantly, the four powers are going to guarantee, four powers, Britain, France, Italy, and Germany, will guarantee the independence of the rest of Czechoslovakia. Also at this Munich conference, David Lloyd George, or pardon me, Neville Chamberlain and Adolf Hitler will also sign a, an agreement known as the Anglo-German Declaration. Um, this is a, a, an agreement between those two nations, another one of these bilateral agreements that Adolf Hitler likes to enter into so much, that um, will agree that any disputes between these two nations will be resolved through consultation. Uh, this is the, the incredibly famous, maybe infamous photo of Neville Chamberlain returning to London, getting off of his plane, waving the Anglo-German declaration in the air and letting his, his uh, supporters know that we will have peace in our time. Um, and, and he's met by, by throngs of supporters. If you watch the video on YouTube, you're going to hear cheering uh, for him because they've avoided war, which is what everybody wanted to do. Of course, Adolf Hitler will not be true to his word. Um, and, and for Czechoslovakia, this is a disaster and the end of this, this nation um, as we go through the war. The loss of the Sudetenland takes away about 70% of the heavy industry for Czechoslovakia, a third of their population. They're losing natural defenses uh, in the mountain regions and fortifications that were constructed there. Hitler is going to encourage Slovakian independence um, and, and um, some Slovaks in Czechoslovakia are asking for Hitler's defense and he will oblige. In March of 1939, German troops will enter the rest of Czechoslovakia. Um, this is the point where British appeasement, giving in to some Hitler demands, um, will ultimately come to an end because Nazi leadership has now betrayed these agreements. Also of note, the taking of Czechoslovakia, the rest of Czechoslovakia, the non-German parts of Czechoslovakia, this is Hitler's first move to creating his Lebensraum, the living space that he desired. And now we look to the north with the invasion of Poland. Poland was a new state um, created after the, the Second or First World War with the Treaty of Versailles. And some of the territory that, that became Poland was part of the old German Empire. Um, importantly, there is what is known as the Polish Corridor. And that is this little guy, I can find it right up there, don't have that far. Anyway, it's the connection to uh, the Baltic Sea. Um, and you can see that it bisects Germany this is a problem for Adolf Hitler. You got, you got a divided Germany. He wants the Polish corridor. And within that Polish corridor is a port city called Gdansk or Danzig um, that was considered by the, the Treaty of Versailles a free city. After the occupation of Czechoslovakia, Germany and Hitler proposed that Danzig should be returned to Germany. Poland, of course, refused. 
Um, on March 30th, seeing the inevitability of, of, of an invasion later of Poland, uh, Britain and France will offer a guarantee of security to Poland. Now, I don't know how long that, you know, how, how people would have felt about that because they had already offered a guarantee of security to Czechoslovakia and we saw how that ended. Germany, following this, will end their non-aggression pact with Poland. Remember that they signed back in 1934. It was supposed to be a 10-year agreement. That is gone. He will enter into an agreement on May 22nd of 1939 with Italy, the Pact of Steel, where Germany and Italy, seeing France and Britain standing in their way to their empires, will agree to a military alliance should hostilities begin. Now, Hitler wants Poland, but he's got a problem in the Soviet Union further to the east. He does not want to fight a two-front war. Remember, Adolf Hitler was a soldier in World War I. He knows what troubles existed for Germany in World War I, and fighting a two-front war was one of them. And so he will move to, to make sure that Soviet, the Soviet Union is not an issue for his war plans. On August 24, 1939, um, Germany and the Soviet Union will sign what's known as the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, or the Nazi-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact. This is a neutrality agreement between these two sides in case a, a war breaks out and either party is in war. They won't go to war with each other. But it also called, more secretly, for a division of Northern and Eastern Europe into Soviet and, uh, and German spheres. For the Germans, they avoid their two-front war. They've got a clear path towards moving in at least to Western Poland. Um, and they'd get access to Soviet resources. There were also some trade agreements that came along with these negotiations. For the Soviets, they stay out of a wider European war and they can focus on the Japanese threat in the East. And they hope that Germany and the West, you know, if they do ultimately throw down, that, that Germany and Britain and France will ultimately weaken each other, leaving the Soviet Union in the East strong. They also are going to gain some territory out of this and they're gonna get access to trade and credit from the German state. Of course, now Hitler has got what he needs to feel comfortable about moving in to Poland. On the 25th of August, Poland and Britain sign a full military alliance. It's as if they know what is about to come. Benito Mussolini, not ready for war at this point uh, because his armies have been depleted through wars in, in Ethiopia and through the Spanish Civil War. Uh, he tries to organize another conference, kind of like the Munich Conference, but Hitler is not willing to wait. On the 31st of August, Germany makes the claim, a claim that a border radio station uh, was attacked by Polish forces. Um, this is a ruse similar to the, the Mukden incident. Um, the, the German SS actually dressed as Polish soldiers and used some, some German prisoners dressed in Polish uniforms um, that, that would be killed and left behind as evidence of this Polish invasion. But this became what we call the causus belli, the, the reason for war, the cause for the attack. On September 1st, 1939, Germany invades Poland uh, with a, an army invasion across the border and a Luftwaffe bombing of Warsaw and other major cities in Poland. The Second World War is on in Europe. 